Right, I think we're live. Good evening, everybody. As always, please let me know in the chat if you can hear me and you can see me okay. And welcome to a two-player tutorial and playthrough video for Tekeno. Uh, came out in 2020, designed by Daniel Toshini, David Turtsey, published by Board and Dice, who've kindly sponsored this video. Uh, and I'm joined by Andy tonight, who you can't see. Hello. But he is here. He is here. Um, yeah, so I did a solo playthrough this afternoon. Uh, if you want to see me do a solo playthrough, that is on the channel now. Just just search through my videos uh, for earlier on today where I did a solo playthrough. I won't spoil the results by telling you how well I did. But tonight we're going to be doing two player. And Andy's not played the game before and know nothing about it apart nope. from it's called Tekenu. In fact, you know as much about it as I've just said. <laughs> yeah, so this much. is going to be... I'm going to teach you everything before we start. It's going to be a lot. Okay. okay. But then... Obviously, feel free to say, what, how does this action work again? Yeah, absolutely. So I will throw a load of information at you at the start. I might not go into the minute detail about each individual action, but I will give you, obviously, as much as we can. So this is a Euro game where we're trying to score points as, as normal. We start with 10 points each. Yep. We're going to be playing the game over 16 rounds. There is a bit of end game scoring. I would say not much, but it could be depending on what you do. But you're going to score a lot of points during the game as well. Uh, the theme of the game is that we're all nobles. I will read the proper theme, because otherwise I'll forget. Uh, we take on the roles of nobles in ancient Egypt as we are building the Temple of Amun-Ra and the area that is to become ipet Usut, wherever that is. I don't know. Um, so, it is a dice drafting game. Okay. You might be thinking, where's the dice? I haven't <laughs> actually set the dice up yet. I should have done this before we went on camera. My mic is distorting a bit. Okay, thank you very much. I'll turn me down. How's that? Is that any better? Hopefully that isn't distorting as much. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we have the obelisk here. The obelisk, you'll notice there's an arrow here. Uh, and we've started that pointing to a random position. Okay, so I rolled randomly to see where the arrow started. And then what we do is in the dice bag, we have dice of five different colours. Now, four of those colours match the four main resources in the game. You have white, which is limestone, black, which is granite, brown, which is bread, yellow, which is papyrus. The grey dice doesn't match a resource whatsoever. You cannot use the grey dice to get resources. Okay, what we're going to do to finish the setup, because the rest of the setup has been done, I just didn't do this bit, oh that shouldn't be there, is we take out three dice from the bag for each section and we put them in each of the three sections. In fact, I'm, it's probably a good idea that we're doing this live because you need to understand how these dice in these sections work. This is a fundamental concept of the game is dice can either be pure, tainted or forbidden. Okay. okay. <laughs> there we go. Now, if we have a look at each of the areas, you will notice there's a there's different shading around the obelisk. Mm -hmm. So this represents that as the sun goes round, it casts the shadow in a different way. So these two sections here are in sunlight. They are bright, it's sunny, okay? These two sections here are currently in darkness, and these two sections are shady, right? The dice go each, in each section, the dice will either go in the top row, the middle row, or the bottom row, depending on whether they are forbidden, tainted, or pure. Mm -hmm. And which section, which type they are, depends on the lightness. So if you look on here, it says, oh, it tells you, yeah. if it's sunny, anything that's black or brown is forbidden. So they're forbidden, okay? Anything that's gray or yellow is tainted, and anything that's white is pure. Okay. Okay, so do you want to put the dice in there? Sure, to see if um, yeah, okay, doc. Um Let me just see, there's actually no forbidden ones. That's the key thing here. In the shadowy areas, in the shady areas, there is no forbidden dice. So it's, yeah. The, forbidden dice, yes. <laughs> the paper is, what's the uh, middle one? Tainted. Tainted. That's limestone. Oh, that's limestone. limestone and this is, is bread. And bread is pure. Bread is pure. Right, okay. okay Can we do that one? Yeah, let's see. Okay, so here the granite is pure. Yeah. The bread is tainted. Yeah. And the... Papyrus is forbidden. Papyrus is forbidden. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do these. And there we go. Right. 
those dice will always be in the right positions on there. But that that is is the setup done. Uh, let's have a look at your player board. You have buildings. You will build these during the game. This icon here is a little hourglass. In fact, have I got a little preset for Andy's board? I do. So this is an hourglass, right? Hourglass is scoring. So whenever we do a scoring, you will look underneath. You will see some of them have victory points. You always have to build from left to right. But if you have unlocked any of the, the victory point ones, you will score those points when we get scoring. But also notice there's a bread cost. So that's at the point you need to feed the people in your buildings mm -hmm. with bread. If you don't have bread, you lose three points for every bread that you're missing, right? So that's your buildings. These <laughs> are your resource trackers for papyrus, bread, limestone, and granite. Okay. This represents when you produce how many you are allowed to keep. So right now, if you were able to produce four papyrus, two of them would be wasted. Okay. You still produce four papyrus, and in fact, you get a penalty for the ones that you can't keep. But... I say can't keep. There's no limit to how much papyrus you can store. So it isn't a storage limit. If you had six papyrus and you produced four more, you would keep two of what you've just produced and then add it to what you've already got. So it's not a warehouse limit. It's a production limit of how much you can produce at any one time. Okay. okay? Also notice, I'll just point out this out here. In the scoring phase, if any of these markers are at the top, you get two points for each one. So every time you see the hourglass icon, that means in the scoring phase. You have your statues down at the bottom. Your statues must be built from left to right. The cost to build a statue, let's just slide them up a bit. There we go. Yeah, so yeah. the cost to build a statue is in granite. And in the scoring phase, you will score points based on how many statues you've built. Okay, so that's your player board. Off camera, each of us has pillars. Okay, so each of us has eight pillars. Eight? Eight uh, pillars. These are I've off gone. camera. They don't need yeah, to be. Eight. They don't go on your player board. Uh, we will. We will put them on during the game. Right. So, this is the first time I've actually taught this game. So, <laughs> you mentioned something about storage. You have no storage limit. Uh, what? How? What? Presumably, that will come up at some point. Yeah. You start the game with one gold, mm -hmm. and you start the game with one scribe, and there is no storage limit. So, what I'm saying is, don't think of this as a storage limit. It's not. So the, if we were to produce more, it wouldn't actually be wasted. It would just go into storage if we were to produce no. more. So if you currently have six papyrus and you produce four more, you could only keep two of what you have just produced, making your total now eight. Okay. Okay, does that make more sense? Yeah. Right. So this is the limit of what can then go into storage, is that what you're saying? Or? S storage is just what you've got. Yeah. But, you know, if you were to... <clears throat> I guess what I'm saying is, when you're producing them, do they go into storage or they, do they go somewhere else? No, they just go... Yeah, yeah okay. You just, you just get them. Yeah, got it. Right, so before we finish the setup, because there is some setup that we need to do with regards to these starting cards and these ant cards and everything else, I'll explain the core overview of the game. We're going to be playing over 16 rounds, mm -hmm. but it's actually divided into two scorings. So there's a scoring at the end of round 16, and there's a scoring at the end of round 8. Mm -hmm. So within an eight round sequence, that is divided into two mart phases, okay? And each mart phase is divided into two, what's it called? Revolutions? Rotations. And a rotation happens every two, turn, every two rounds. So we play a round, which is one turn each. We play another round, so we've, both, we've had two turns each. We then rotate. Okay. Then we play another two turns. Then we rotate again, then there's a mart phase. So we've now had four turns. Then we play another two turns, another rotation, another two turns, mart rotation, mart phase, scoring. Mm -hmm. And then we do the whole thing again. Yeah, okay. okay. So it's basically, yeah, it's on here. Two rounds makes up a rotation, two rotations make up a mart phase, two mart phases is scoring, and two scorings is the game. Right, so it's 16 rounds, but it's it's subdivided. And different things happen at different times. You can probably guess what happens in the rotation. The, yeah. it, it will rotate one particular one section round. Okay, so that's you can just rotate it by twizzle. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, going to happen eight yeah. times during the game. Right, when it is your turn, you take a dice. It's dice drafting. Oh, mm -hmm. you've broken it. I have broken it. <laughs> I thought I might. 
<laughs> there you go. So when it's your turn, you choose a dice. Okay. Now the forbidden dice can't be taken for a start. Um, but once you've chosen a dice, you put it on your player board in either the left hand scale if it was pure. Yeah. Or the right hand scale if it was tainted. Yeah. Okay. I'll come on to that later on. Yeah. Every time you choose a dice, you can do one of two things with it. You can either perform the god action. There are six different gods. So there are six different god actions. If you choose to do the god action, you must do the god action from the section that you took it. Mm -hmm. So we have Horus, we have uh, Ra, we have um, Hathor, we have Bastet, we have Thoth, and we have Osiris. So if I choose that die, I do the Osiris action. I can't choose to do that one, right? Your other option is to produce resources. Mm -hmm. If you produce resources, it doesn't matter where the dice is, it's the colour of the dice that matters. So if I produce this dice, I produce six limestone. Uh -huh. Okay? If I choose that dice, I'd be cheating because it's forbidden. <laughs> right? So you can never choose a forbidden dice. Yep. Right. So once you've chosen your dice, you either do the god action or the taking resources. We've, I've kind of mentioned taking resources already. So if, if right now I choose this die, it's a pure dice, I put it there, I produce six limestone. Yeah. How many of that can I keep? Two at the moment. Exactly. So I keep two limestone. The other four go here. Oh, I see. Right? They're not mine. I can't spend them. But they were wasted. And that is bad. By putting them there, that has tipped the scales in that direction. Okay? Which is a bad thing. So generally speaking... You don't want to produce more than you can actually collect okay. at that time. Generally speaking, you might want to. We will see. I'll come on to that. That's how resource gathering works. So that's actually the easiest action to explain. Mm -hmm. You can't use grey dice to collect resources. Okay? Michael is saying that there is a card that allows you to choose a forbidden die. It's essentially broken. Right, okay. Right, the god actions. There are six different god actions in the game, and they each apply to the section of the board that they're nearest. So this god action applies to this section. This one applies to this section. This one applies to this section. This one applies here. Okay. Uh, no, actually here. This one applies to the card row. And this one applies here. Okay? okay. I can go into full details about each one. But what I'm probably best doing is explaining each one of them roughly and what it does. What I will say, from my limited knowledge of this game, you don't want to do everything. Okay. You might want to focus on a couple of areas. I mean, you might want to do... I don't know, tactically. I don't know. You might want to do a bit of everything. I guess we'll, we'll find out, won't we? But what I'm saying is, if you think that's a part of the game I don't understand... Like in the last game I played, I ignored this card row pretty much. Completely. The whole game. I just ignored it. Not deliberately, because I was busy doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do everything in the game. You won't be able to get all six statues out and all of your buildings out. And a million, you, I don't think you'll be able to do all of that. Right. So let's go through the different actions in clockwise order from here. Why not? Right. So this is Horus. Horus's action allows you to build a statue. I think it's summarized on here. Yeah. Mm. So your god actions, Horus allows you to build a statue. Now, I've already mentioned you have to build your statues from left to right. And the first statue is for granite. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have one gold. Gold is a wild card. Okay. So right now, you can't do this action anyway, right? Because you've literally got one gold. You don't, you don't have enough. If you had four gold, you could. But right now, you can't build a statue. If you were to be able to build a statue, you've got two choices. You can either build the statue in honour of one of the gods, or you can build it for the people. If you build it for one of the gods, then the dice value that you drafted indicates which god, god it's built for. Yeah. Now, there is a variant rule which mixes these up and swaps them around. We're playing with just the, the pre-printed set. Mm -hmm. The variant rule just literally mixes them up. There's no extra rules. It just swaps the positions. So if you were to take this three right now, it's a tainted die. You would put it there. And if you wanted to build a statue to honor the gods, it would be this god mm -hmm. that you built. This is Bastet. So it would go here. Now, if you look around the obelisk, there are spaces for the statues. 
but there's only three spaces per god in a four-player game. Three-player game, two, two spaces. And in a two-player game, so there's only one space. Okay. So each god in a two-player game can only have one statue built for it. Therefore, if there was already a statue here, and you took that three, you could not use it to build another statue there. Mm -hmm. You would have to use it to build a statue for the people. Where does the statue so for the I, I will people mention, go? Well, first of all, I'll mention what statues for the gods does. Okay. A statue for the gods means that for the rest of the game, whenever any player performs that action, you get the bonus that's printed here. Now, that's only for a two-player game. If we were playing a three- or a four-player game, it would be whenever another player performs that action. But in a two-player game, it's, it's whenever you perform that action. So if you know you're going to be doing this action a lot, you build get a statue, a statue. There, and then whenever anybody does this action, including you, you get a gold. Okay, so these are the bonuses that you get based on where you build the statue. That's that. I have no idea what this is. Oh, no, I do. Yeah, that's for this. Right. Your other option is that you build the statue to honour the people. And you either build it here or here, or you build it there or there. Now, straight away, there's a gold on the space. So if you were to build a statue here, you get the gold, right? Gold is quite rare. It's quite hard to get. Statues here will give you a bonus during scoring. Statues here will also give you a bonus during scoring. Okay? Any questions roughly about building statues? Um... So there isn't a repeated benefit to the building a statue for the people. It, uh, well, no, I suppose during scoring. During scoring of which yeah. there's two in the game. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But not, but not, like not in the same way. Not in the same way. As building a statue to a god. Okay. Okay. That's it. I said I wasn't going to go into the full details. I've gone into the full details. Right. That, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much how that one works. Um, yeah. If you build a statue over here, then you get points. Let me just check that. Building a statue for the people. Um, yeah, if you build a statue at the temple complex, you will get an immediate boost of points if you have pillars in that column or row. That's what that means. So if you were to build a statue here, for every one of your pillars in that row or column, you get three points. It's got to be your pillars. Right. Speaking of pillars, let's go on to the RAR action. The RAR action is possibly the most complicated one in the game. So it's all downhill from here, right? <laughs> uh, first of all, you build, you, you build a pillar in the temple. This is very thematic. But as we know, if you try and build a, a stone pillar onto sand, it will sink and fall over. Mm -hmm. So you have to put it on a foundation. And that's what these are. Right. Okay. There are three foundations. Uh, Andy, just off camera, has got a big pile of... A uh, big pile of tiles. We've, we've taken the top three. And the number on the dice that you have drafted indicates which tile you must take. So if you, if you take, use the five, you're building that one. You take the one, you're building that one. You've got no choice. And straight away, you've noticed the one, two, or three points. So you get those points immediately for taking that foundation. Then what you do is you take the foundation and you move it onto any empty space of the temple and you can rotate it however you want because what you're trying to do is you're trying to match colored sides to either the walls of the temple or to a piece he's already put on the board. Placing it there will get you uh, one point for every colored side that touches another side of the same color. So if I take that and put it like that, that's matching yeah. two colored sides that would be two points. Okay. okay. However, there's a special rule for the corners that it doubles the points you get for matching sides. So that there is actually four points. Okay, because you're matching two sides. Now the cost to build these pillars is printed on them. So that one is three limestone. That's four limestone, and that's three limestone under granite. Oh, I see. It's not free. Right? The pillars that go on these foundations. Yeah, and then you put the pillar on the foundation. Yep. So you don't just put the foundation, it's pillar and foundation together as one. Thing. Oh, right. Yeah. At the same time. At the same time. It's not one and then the next nope, in nope. another it's turn. All, it's all one action. Okay. 
You get the bonus of the space that you cover over as well. Hmm. Okay, so you always get that. Um, and you also get points if there are buildings in the row or column. So we haven't mentioned buildings yet, but if I had a building there, and I decide to... Sorry, if I had a building there, and I decided to put that there, uh, where are we? Like that. Then I would get one point because there's a building there. Okay, so for buildings in the same row or column, you get extra points. Right. The last bit of this is you'll note this, this is blank, but this yeah. has a special ability on it. Now, in normal games like this, you will get that special ability when you build it, yeah? In this game, those foundation tiles come in three different categories of light. Sunny, dark, and there are shady ones as well. You only get the bonus on the tile if the raw action is currently in the right one. So at the moment, if you were to build that, you wouldn't get the bonus that's printed on it, which is fine because there's no bonus printed on it. But if you used it to build that one or that one, you would not get the bonus printed on it. Oh, man. You can still do it. And sometimes it's actually still quite good because of all of the other bonuses. You just don't get what's printed on it unless this matches. Okay? It makes it extra tricky. It, it does. Yeah. Well, it's an extra bonus if you manage to match the okay. type of the, the light. Okay. Next up is Hathor. So Hathor is also about this, but Hathor is about putting buildings down. Now, some of you watching may notice that there are gaming rules dice all over here. That's because these spaces are not used in a two-player game. Why don't I just use buildings of a non-colour? It's because the number of buildings in a row and column matter. I don't want to use buildings mm. because they're not buildings, but I want to cover the spaces up. So what you do is you pay bread according to the space. It's two, three, four, three, two, right? And then what you do is you take your leftmost building, you put it on the space. That gets you, I'm going to explain number two first, three points for each one of your pillars in that column. And then for every space that doesn't have a pillar on it, you gain the resource printed on it. One of them. So if I put that building there, I would get one papyrus, one bread, and one faith. You don't get the three. You only get one of each. So if I built it there, I'd get one faith, one limestone, one papyrus, one granite, and one bread. Have we talked about faith? No. Okay. I'll come on to faith in a minute. Okay? And population. Right. So one of the bits I haven't mentioned yet is the population and happiness track. Both of us start off with five population, two of which are happy. Oh, I see. <laughs> the way that you move your population up is whenever you put a building here, the value of the dice that you use increases your population by that amount. Okay. That's how you move your population up. Now, interestingly, population doesn't really do anything for you in the game. Happiness is what's going to do you good, but your happiness cannot go above your population. So you have to raise the population up before you can raise the happiness up, but it's the happiness which is going to get you all of the bonuses. Population will do something when it gets into this area, but not much. So that's building and buildings. It's all, it's all explained on here. Spend bread, build a building, and do all of this stuff. Right. Next action is this one. Speaking of making people happy, this is a really easy one. You spend two papyrus, and you... So this is the symbol for population. Mm -hmm. This is the symbol for happy people. Okay. Waving their arms. See, he's smiling. Um, this increases your happiness by the value of the dice that you use. Mm -hmm. So that icon means the value of the dice you use. Happiness can never go above your current people. So right now, if you were to gain, if you were to take this, that would be a waste because you'd gain three and then you'd lose the remaining three. You just wouldn't get it. Okay. So spend two papyrus, increase your happiness by the amount equal to the value on the dice. Then if you use the die of value five or six, no other bonus. If you use the die of three or four, you get a scribe. If you use a die of value one or two, you get two scribes. Start the game with one scribe. I haven't mentioned them yet, but I will. That's what that does. Next up is Thoth. Thoth is about taking cards from the card market. So I'll explain the card market briefly. We have four sections. We have tan, red, green, and blue. 
At the start of the game, only the tan section and the red section have cards in them. The cards in them are of two, currently two different types. There are blessings, there are technologies. There are also decree cards, piles of cards off camera, okay? When a population marker enters the green zone, we fill that. Just the first time. Right. When a population marker enters the blue zone, we fill that. It's just... That's the time in the game when these new cards come out, okay? So with this action, you either... If you use a dice of one, of one or two, you take one card for free. If you use a dice of three or four, you take two cards for two Papyrus. And if you use a die of value five to six, you take three cards for three Papyrus. But two limitations. First of all, all the cards you take must be from the same section. You can't split. And also, the position of your happiness marker determines which section you can take from. So right at the, right at the moment, both of our happiness markers are in this tan section. We can only take from these cards. So pushing your population up unlocks these spaces, but you can't take them until your happiness marker gets up there. Okay? Okay. Right. Blessing cards. One off. Use them whenever you want on your turn. They do what they say. You throw them away. Right. Okay. Use as many of them as you want. Technology cards. Permanent cards. Stay in play. They're with you for the entire game. And they give you a special bonus. For example, when you perform a Thoth God action, gain one Papyrus. Right? Okay. Decree cards, which will come out there, there, and there. End game scoring cards. Which we've already got a which couple we've of. we've already got a couple of. And before the game starts, you must choose one of those to keep. Right, I see. Okay. Also in this area, if you wanted to, you can spend one papyrus to recycle all of the cards in one section. So you can say, I don't like those cards. I'll spend one papyrus. Get them out. Right. Finally, we have Osiris. Osiris is about putting buildings into here. So your buildings on your board can either go over there in the temple, or they can go here, which is the workshops. Well, it's either a workshop or a quarry. There's four rows, districts. This is the papyrus district, bread district, limestone district, granite district. These are called workshops. These are called quarries. The value of the dice you choose determines the row that it goes in, but you can put it in whichever one you want. You can put it in whichever column you want, right. but the value of the die choose it. So if I choose the four, I have to build here. Yeah. Okay. And that's... In each space... Uh, oh, happiness. So building a building in this game here doesn't cost any resources. It, you have to lose one happiness Okay. because your people are having to go to work. Okay, so every time you put a building here, you lose a happiness. But when you put a building here, there are two different effects. What's printed in the space is what mark. You see, there's an arrow mm -hmm. that moves up the appropriate markers. What's printed just above the space is what you get immediately. So if I put that there, I get um, oh, sorry here. My granite and my limestone both go up by one, and then I get one granite and one gold as a one-off bonus. That goes there. That's there for the whole game. It will score points in the scoring phase. Well, it might. It probably will. That is all of the god actions. Right. Scribes. When you take a die, this is printed on your player board here, you may spend one scribe to increase or decrease the value of the die up or down by one, and you physically change the die. Can't go above six, can't go below one, can't, doesn't wrap round. Okay? So that's one use for scribes. Another use for scribes is if you have two of them. If you have two scribes, then when you take a die, you can do that action. Right? That is Anubis. Now, I've never done this. I've never used this action uh, in a game. Because in the last game I played, I didn't have any scribes whatsoever. But using Anubis allows you to basically let me just get this where is it because i've never done it that's why i want to just read this bit out using scribes here we go so you can spend exactly two scribes to perform an anubis action when you do this you may take any die from around the obelisk any die 
including a forbidden one. And use the die to perform any action, right? Literally any action, either a god action or resources or whatever. So I could take this one, even though it's forbidden, and perform this action over here, right? You can, you can take any die and perform any action. Only the value on the die is relevant. Uh, but what you do is you play the die here and not onto one of the scales. So it doesn't actually count towards the balancing, which I'm about to explain in a minute. Right, so there you go. That's, that's the use for scribes. Okay, so after we've had two turns each, we rotate it, and then what we do is we... There's four dice left in the bag. We take out those four dice and put two in each of the new shadow zones, roll them, and then we have to move the dice around. We don't change the values on the dice, but we move them around. So when that moves to there, for example, uh, these dice that were forbidden are still forbidden. Um, is that right? Yeah. So when we move that to there, uh, this dice now becomes pure, for example. So every time it ro rotates, <clears throat> we move everything around. But yeah, in a rotation, two extra dice get added in, and we shuffle the dice. And that's it. That's all that happens on a rotation. So we've got four dice each. Where did that come from? That came from there, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we do it another twice. So we've now got four dice each. We do a rotation again, but then we do a marked phase. Okay? In the marked phase, that's when you check for balance. So this is after we've had four turns. You will have four dice. You check your, for your balance. If you have any faith tokens at that point, you'll notice the icon on the faith token is both the feather and the vase. You use them to try and balance it out. It is optional. You don't have to use them, but they all disappear anyway. So you might as well use them. Okay. You're trying to balance it out if you can. And then what you do is once we've done that, we take our turn order markers from here and you put it on the sarcophagus depending on your balance. So let's say I've got a net balance of plus four, and let's say you've got a net balance of minus three. Okay, so what that means is you're closer to balance than I am. You're going to go first in the next round. So you will actually... Right. It's not the highest score goes first, it's the one that's Close the closest to zero. to zero. Now, if we're tied, it uses the ANC value that I'll mention in a minute. But you'll notice these negative points here. But if you are in the minus, you do actually suffer a penalty. If you're on minus two, that's fine. And this is what caught me out when I last played it. I thought, oh no, I'm on minus two. That's bad. But if the other player's on four, that's actually great. You're not suffering a penalty and you get to go first next round. Okay. okay. But there's a penalty if you do go too far. A penalty if you're on minus three or lower. Okay. Okay. So you want to watch out for that. But... Yeah, you want to try to keep them balanced if, if you can because there's competition for turn order. Competition for turn order isn't as important in a two-player game as it would be in a three- and four-player mm. game. Some people have said it's really not that important. But then we determine new player order based on that. Then there may be a scoring. There won't be on the first mark phase, but there will be on the second mark phase. Then your dice go back in the bag, and then we go back into the rotation, and we put the dice on, and we do all of that stuff again. Okay. Okay. Destiny cards will come back. I'll explain them in a second. So we've had two rounds, then a rotation. Two rounds, then a rotation, then a mark phase. Then two more rounds and a rotation. Two more rounds and a rotation and a mark phase. And at that point... Where is it? This will be pointing to there. First scoring phase. Mm -hmm. right? Remember what I said about the hourglass? That's the first scoring phase. So in the first scoring phase, I'll now go through how you get points. First thing we score is here. Each of these columns is an area, and it's like a little area control. Okay. Area. Whoever has the most buildings in that column will get three points. If it's tied, it's whoever's closest to the top. So whilst the low buildings aren't as valuable in terms of their immediate bonus, they break ties. Now, quick note about a statue. A statue here 
count as one building in both columns. Okay. And, of course, it's higher than anything else. Right? So it doesn't just break ties, it actually counts as one building in each column. So, points available there. Temple complex. Every building and every pillar... Sorry, no. Every building and every statue scores one point over in the temple. And also, a p every pillar will score points based on your buildings and statues in the same row and column. Basically, points over there if you manage to do stuff, okay? Statues, you score points for statues based on how many you've built, and it's a triangular number sequence? No. Not the triangular number sequence, is it? What is it? Fibonacci sequence? 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21? That's the question for the chat. I mean, you've burnt out my brain explaining the rules. I'm not going to be able to get that one. I can't remember the name of the sequence. I think, I think it's... No, it's not Fibonacci. That's 1, 1, 2... I think it's a triangular number system. Anyway, more points the more you've built. Mm -hmm. Happiness. I mentioned happiness gets your points, but mm -hmm. I didn't mention how. You're looking for these triangles. If your happiness reaches that triangle, you get three points. If it reaches that one, you're going to get six. If it's that one, you're going to get nine. Okay? Basically, the further your happiness is, you get more points. Also, if your happiness ever enters that space, you get a gold. That space, you get a scribe. That space... You get free action if we get that far. I can't see us getting that far. <laughs> yeah, you're doing pretty well if you get up there. Every production marker you have at the top in the scoring phase gets you two points. I've never done that. I've only played it once, but I've never done that. So, sorry, which what? E every of these markers that's at the top in the scoring phase will get you okay. two points. And then I mentioned you get the points for the buildings and you have to pay the bread. That happens in the scoring phase as well. So, scoring phase is this. And that's half the game. Okay? And then we do it all again. And then at the end of the game, you may score up to three decree cards, but every one you score must have a different symbol. So if you look at your decree cards, they've got symbols on them. Ah. Yeah? You can score a maximum of three decree cards, but every one must have a different symbol. It's a triangular number system. Thank you. I thought it was. Okay. That's everything. Cool. Is it's that, a heavy game. It's, it's, this yeah. is not a light game, but I think... It seems manageable. There's a couple of tiny little bits that I forgot, like at the very, very end of the game, whoever's first gets three points. That only applies in a three and four First in game. what? First in turn order. Oh, I see. So at the end of the game, if you're ahead in turn order, you get, you get three points. Okay. So, the next thing to do is your decree cards. Each of us has been dealt two decree cards at the start of the game. We must choose which one of them we want to be our end game scoring card. Do you understand both of them? Yeah, they're pretty clear. That kind of gives you something to aim for. Uh, yeah, I think so. I've got the one that I used this afternoon, so I'm going to take a different one. Yeah. Okay. So, they are gone. That goes face down. I think, I think that's face down. Then what we do is we decide this initial turn order at random, but it's not really turn order. Right, you're going first. What we do is we take these starting cards. So these are the starting cards that come with the game. In a two-player game, we're going to deal five of them out. I'm going to put them facing you. In a three-player game, it would be seven of them. In a four-player game, it would be nine of them. And... Because your marker was chosen first, you get to take one of them. I then get to take one of them. I then get to take a second one. And then you get to take a second one. Each of us will then get everything that's printed on it. But the sum of the numbers at the top on the two cards that you've taken, the highest value will actually be the first player. Right. At the start of the game. Okay. Generally speaking, the lower the number, the better the card is because it's a lower initiative value. This is three papyrus stroke bed. So three of either papyrus bread or any mixture. This one, I have no idea. <laughs> no, 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 I do know that one. It's performed the Osiris action, which is built in here, with a value three. So basically, but it has to be on that side. So basically, you get a building there or there at the start of the game without having to spend the happiness. So you start the game with one of those two buildings. That's what that one does. This one is you draw two um, what they mm. called? blessings. Blessings. You draw two blessings 
Keep one of them, shuffle the other one back in. Remember, these are one-off cards. This is one of each of those four resources, and that is any five resources. And I get to choose first. Official errata, we should remove the decree which doubles another decree. I've done that. Card D03 is out. And also, <laughs> uh, card D07 is capped at 21 points. <laughs> yep. Cool. Um... Well, I quite like the sound of this one. I know mm -hmm. it means that it's the lowest. So you take but... that, you just pop it below your player board. So I now take two. Um, so I, I like starting with some resources. So I'm going to take... Yeah. I'm going to take that one and that one. And then you now take, you now take one of the other ones. Mm. And I guess... Well, you it, want to take that one. Yeah. Because but, even if you took that one... I wouldn't match I'm you. I'm still going yeah, first. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that gets discarded. Uh, my initiative value is 14, yours is six. So I'm actually gonna be taking the first turn and that only changes in the marked phase. Mm -hmm. So for the first four rounds of the game, I'm, I'm the first player. Now what we do is there's these ank cards. So these ank cards come out every marked phase. It's an extra bonus on the bottom and the ank is your tiebreaker if we both end up on the same distance mm -hmm. from the zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what that is. I get to choose one of those first. So I'm going to choose to take. I haven't got a clue. Um, I'm going to grab the gold. So I'm going to take that one. And I'm actually just going to slot it in there, and I'm going to take the gold right away. Okay, which one would you like? Um, so it's a scribe, a faith, or a move on Either the... one population or one happiness. Yeah. Uh, And we only get to take one of these? So. Yeah, one, one of these per mart phase. Right, okay. So four times during the game, you'll take one of these. So this is, I think, the better I... one. But it means that if we do tie here, I would win that tie because I've got that. I was thinking that I quite like the idea of having a move on the yeah. track. So, um... so do you want population or happiness? Guess happiness okay. on the basis so that, that we've discussed. And then if you just took that in so we can just see the ANC number, because that's all that's relevant. Mm -hmm. um, and we now get the bonuses from our cards. Mm -hmm. So I get uh, one limestone. Uh, I get one bread. I get one papyrus. And I get one granite. And I also draw two blessings. Keep one, shuffle the other back into the deck, and that's the starting cards are done. You no longer need them. They can get removed. So okay, so put this, one. Would you like it on the... Uh, I mean, both of these spaces <laughs> will increase that by one and that by one. It's whether you want to start with one limestone or one granite. Um, I think I want to start with a granite. Okay, so it goes on so... there. You get a granite. Okay. And uh, then you get five resources of whatever of, of any type. I would like um, and then these do they, where do these go once we've done that? They just go. Um, okay, so I'll take another three granites. Mm -hmm. I suspect um, there might be a statue being built. That's <laughs> what, what we're looking at. Uh, Remember you can't actually build a statue. Just right yet. now, because there's okay. no... Di oh, no, hang on a minute. That's not right. should be three dice in each area. So we've lost one somewhere. We've lost oh, one. It was this one. It. Where, where was it? It was there. So that's tainted. So you can. You can build a statue at the start of the game. If I get a chance, and then... We will, because uh, I, I... Oh, no, I could take it to take resources. You're right. I, I could, um, if I really wanted to. Just trying to or keep track of what we need it all for. Um... 
buildings. Where did the buildings go? They go there. What do we do? Need? Buildings go over here for bread, or down here for happiness. Okay, that's cool. So I think I probably want a couple of bread. Probably, I think that's. Um... And you'll need the bread to feed your buildings in the scoring phase, which is twice per game. What do we? Um... This is no. Where's production? Is that production? So resource production. Yeah. Is when you choose a die, you can either perform a good of action course, yeah. or of produce course. resources. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, Any questions? <laughs> yeah, loads. But I will answer as many questions of, as you want. None of the tough. My what head. we haven't done is we haven't gone through all of these cards. But I would suggest. Yeah. We, we don't yet. Whenever you want to look at these cards, we can go through what there is. So no. I, yeah, that's great. Thanks. Um, just I'm carry on. First action. I have I absolutely no idea what, what I want to do. do. But I can't build a statue because I don't have four granite. I mean, I have two gold. That that's pretty good. I mean, two gold. Um, oh, could I have taken gold with the? Um, no, uh, no. I got a gold because of this card. This uh, this had a gold on it, and we start the game with a gold. So, I mean, there's a six here. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to take this six. Yeah, I'm going to take this six. So it's a pure dice. I take it and I put it here. Uh, I'm going to choose to do the god action. So it's the Osiris action, which allows me to put a building here. So it costs me one happiness. My people are really not happy. I take this and it's because I used a six, I have to put it somewhere along here. Now, I don't really want to put it here because then we'd have one each in this column and you're already winning it because you're there. So I'm going to put it... I'm going to try something completely different. I'm going to put it here. So my papyrus generation goes up by two. I then put any one other... No, no, any one. It could be papyrus again. Uh, oh, that's interesting. No, I'm going to put bread one up by one. That goes there and I immediately get two papyrus. There you go. That is my turn done. And that's it. I just do that 16 times. Easy. <laughs> we'll, be do we'll be done in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Right. Well, I think I am going to build a statue. Okay. You'd be surprised to know. So that's um, the only dice yeah. which you can do it with. Yeah. It's a tainted die. So it goes there. Uh huh. You have to spend four granite for your first statue. And would you like to build it in honour of one of the gods? I'd like to build it in honour of a god, yeah. I would it like... has to be um, best, best at, because you used a die of value three. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, best debt then. I guess, you know, increase happiness marker. That is the, the action for mm -hmm. that one. It um, goes here. Okay. I mean, it, actually, it could go in the middle. It looks better in the middle. Technically speaking, it should go there because those spaces are not available, but I think we'll put it in the middle. So whenever either of us does that action for the rest of the game, you get either a limestone or a granite. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Remind, remind me why it was good to keep happiness up. A couple of reasons. Points in the scoring phase, but also the position of the, the colour bar that your happiness is in determines where you can take cards from. You'll notice there's no decree cards in here and there's no decree cards in here. There is a decree card in here and decree cards are end game points. Okay. Okay. So higher the happiness gives you access to more cards as well as points at the end of the game. Right. My go. Well, guess what I was going to do. Build us, uh, no, build something I was with going papyrus. To do something, but actually, I, I think I want. Oh, it's good. It's going to be done. I'm taking this four. It's a tainted die, so it goes here. I'm building another building, so my happiness goes down to zero. I can't build any more buildings because the people are so unhappy. Uh, and it's a four. Oh, I didn't mention this. There was one thing I didn't mention. There's a gold here. Yeah. The first player to build in column two gets a gold. Not sure why that's in the game, but it is. So yeah, any, the first player to build in that column uh, row gets the gold. So this is a four. 
So I'm going to put it here. That increases my papyrus by one, my gold by one, and gets me a bread and a gold. Okay, you'll go. See what I mean by being overwhelmed by choices? But I think you did the right thing. You got the full granite, you built a statue. It, it, it's something. <laughs> Because when I first played it, I just stared at the board. And <laughs> and went, oh. um, so you can also use process of elimination. Like, can you build a pillar right now? Mm. Remember, the cost to build a pillar is printed on that. Oh, table. right. Yeah. OK. Uh, you can't. I want Hathor, I think, which is That's bread to build a building. Um, so I could afford to, yeah. to do the two um, bread yeah. ones. Um, okay, um, what's the, uh, uh. it will collect you the resources from the row. If there were any of your pillars in that row, it would get you points. Right. But it will allow you to collect all of the resources. I say all of the resources. On each space that depicts resources, you get one of them. So if you were to build a building here, you get one faith, one limestone, one papyrus, one granite, one bread. And they're going to score in the scoring phase as well. Or I guess I could collect some resources, but that's... Um, yeah, so I'm just... Yeah, but I will do the building so of... Use that. The, this is a pure dice. Um, so I'm going to... So I'm going to go with one of the two bread cost so two bread. buildings. Yep. Um... Don't know if there's any. There's no different. Uh, there's Depends a bit of what difference. You want to collect, yeah. I might actually put it there. Okay. Let's just to see. So you. This is no, this is nothing. This isn't a resource. So you get one papyrus, one bread, and one faith. Okay. Okay. Uh, so one papyrus. Yep. One bread. And a faith. Thank you very much. There you go. Uh, okay. Right. That's two turns. So you know what happens now. Uh, we. We turn it. No. We rotate. Yeah. We are at an eighth of the way through the game. Okay. Right? So rotation, just to remind you what happens. And I still have no clue. <laughs> this rotates. We then add two dice to each shadowy section. And then in each section. Oh, shady shit. Yeah. Uh, so in right. each section, we now adjust to the dice to make sure they are in the right place. Will that move to there? Um, huh. uh, oh, I see. These ones are now pure. That one is now forbidden. That goes to there. Uh, uh, they're still those forbidden. Two are still forbidden because it's 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 sunny. Um, what about these? I don't. I haven't done that. Uh, yeah, that's not changed because it was dark. Okay. It's still dark. Okay. But I have done this one and this one. No. Uh, the brown one should be pure. Okay, sorry. Yeah, there you go. That's it. That's that's the rotation done. So now we go to round three, which is me again. Now, what's changed? I've now got three papyrus. Don't forget you've got scribes as well. You use your scribes to do clever stuff. So, which one is Thoth? That is Thoth. Okay, so I, I had a plan. I think I'm going to change that plan. <laughs> right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take this six. So it's a tainted die of value six. And I am going to perform the Thoth action. So because I've used the die of value six, I spend three papyrus and I take three cards. OK. I can't. You got I can't do that. I've just noticed. Do you need another papyrus? Or? I'm not. I can't. My, my people are so unhappy. I can't do that. 
I'm going to have to make them happy first. <laughs> but before I do that, I want to build a building. Oh, so I'm going to take... What am I doing? I'm going to take this brown dice here, which is a pure dice. I'm going to put it there. Um, I am going to spend two bread to place a building... Hmm. I want to spend the gold. Yeah, because the resources on the two spaces. Right, now I'm going to spend the gold. So I'm going to spend the gold as if it was bread. So that's three bread. And I'm going to build here. So that gets me one papyrus, one limestone, one granite, one bread and one faith. Is that what I want? Yeah. One papyrus, one limestone, one granite, one bread, one faith. Loads of stuff. Right. Uh, and because I used a die value 5, I get 5 population. Okay, so oh, I've wow. now entered the green zone, which means we now fill this. Nobody can take any of these cards, but they are there. I will just read out the decree. This one is three points per workshop built. Workshops are here. That's actually quite good for me. So where did the population thing come in? Uh, did we not do yours? No. Ah, we forgot to do yours. So I would have had five, I think. Yeah, it was five as well. Sorry for that. No, that's fine. Yeah. I remembered at the time and then I forgot straight afterwards. So yeah, every time you use a die, every time you build a building here, you gain population equal to the value on the dice. The chat probably told us that. No. Nope. Right. The chat missed telling us that. <laughs> Bad chat. <laughs> um, yeah, good, good, good point, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Um, what's this bit? Oh, that's the points three for the... Points. When you build the building, if there was any of your pillars in that row and column, you get three points for each pillar. Okay. And is that what you need the limestone for? Limestone is generally for building pillars. Okay. With maybe a little bit of granite. And that is the raw. It is the raw action, but yeah, you need... You need limestone and granite. Okay, I'm going to need to think about this a little bit. I mean, I could maybe think out loud if, yeah. if that's yeah, uh, helpful. Um, as a okay, process I, of elimination, you can't do this action. You can't do that action. Yeah, I was wonder, wondering wondering whether it's time to collect some resources or yeah. not. I mean, I, I guess I've got a papyrus and a gold, so um, I could do this, I guess, and just take can't. what. Oh right, okay. But I I can't because there's only. There's, there was, oh, there's a two. I could, I could do that, couldn't I? Y yeah, with, with, I mean, you have one papyrus. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you could, you could draft the two. That would allow you to take any one of those cards. Right. So this one is when you produce, you gain four limestone. Uh, when performing a Ra or Horus God action, do not pay it to the card. Th these are one use only. But that would allow you to build a statue or a pillar for free. It's <laughs> very good. Uh, this is a permanent card. Uh, when you perform a Thoth God action, gain a Papyrus. So whenever you do this action, from then on. Okay, well, I mean... That seems... And don't forget, you've got, one, you've got a scribe. That yeah. can increase or decrease the value of a die by one or two. Okay. If you wanted to use it. And yes, there is a lot to keep track of, Monica. But, you know, I learnt this game at 1 o'clock this afternoon. No, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock noon this afternoon. Before that, I hadn't played it. So it's quite fresh in your mind, at least. It's, it's fresh in my mind, yes. <laughs> I have been literally spending the last 8 hours, 9 hours, learning this game. So um, it is quite fresh. So, I mean, so that's one thing I could do. You could do um, that. Um, yeah. You could just take resources. You so could, you could absolutely. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do. You could take that die and get three granite, mm. and because your 
production capacity is three, you wouldn't be losing any. Yeah. But remember what I said earlier on about if you overproduce, any excess goes here and counts against you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that might be a good thing might because you might need it to balance the scales. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, um, it's a beautiful mechanism to add a twist to the dice drafting that makes you balance the, uh, the things. Um, Could you get a learner's overload? Absolutely. Most people I would teach this game to, and Andy's probably there right now, <laughs> but by the end of the game, you'll be like, right, I get it now. So this is, if I were to take that, that would allow me to do a raw action for free, which is... Or a Horus action for free. Ra is... Ra is building a pillar. Uh huh. Horus is building a statue. Um, Not immediately, but when, when performing one of those actions, yeah, it would be free. Um, so the question is, yeah, and the pillars are helpful if you put. Making buildings, so it's kind of yeah. Pillars combined with buildings in the right row and column will get you bonuses. So it feels uh, slightly obscure, but then I guess I would yeah. I might want to build more buildings, so it's just a question of figuring out how many turns you take to do it all, mm. really. Um, and we've got two more before we score. So we're currently in. You're about to take your third turn. Yeah. The first scoring is after eight. eight turns. Okay, yeah. so there's quite a way to go. Yeah. Um, the balancing happens every four. The scoring happens every eight. Fine. I guess I will do what I thought I was going to do. and Take the two. That is a tainted two. I've lost track of what's what. Okay, that mm -hmm. works out. And, and I will take this one. So you may pay one papyrus, if you wanted to, to cycle... All of the cards in one section. Right, no, I'm not going that, to. Yeah, that. Yeah, it just goes face up in front of you and you can use it whenever you want to. Right, so it's now my fourth turn. So I'm taking this one. Now, I am performing the last death action. You've got a statue there, so you gain either a limestone or a granite. I'll take a granite. I spend two papyrus to gain six happiness because I used a six die and that's it. Your go. Okie doke. Right, well, I guess your, I'm... Your last turn before balancing. Ah. Well. Mm. Mm. Well, that puts the cat amongst the pigeons. Um... I can tell you now, I have one faith token, so that's going there. So I'm... You're... Perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced. Yeah. So, I mean, if I were to take a one action... Um, I mean, you could think I'd of it... I'd get two scribes. I, I'm going to be perfectly balanced, therefore there's no point you even trying to compete. Because you're going to stay... Now, if you were to get perfectly balanced, you can't get perfectly balanced. Yeah. That's the thing. Therefore, I'm going to be first in turn order, so don't worry about it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to end up negative. Although, to be honest, it's only... I think mm. take the best dice for you right now, whatever that is. If it makes you lose a point, then yeah. What are these symbols in the corner here? So that means whenever you build a pillar, if you build it in the corner, it doubles the bonus that you normally get for matching sides. So if I was to build this and put it here, it's one point because red against red. Right. If I build it here, it's one point because it's red against red. Here, if I built it like that, which would be stupid, it's red against red, but it's worth double. But that wouldn't score because it's red against blue. So you'd, you'd build it like that. Okay. That would actually be four points. Fine, I'm going to build one. I'm uh, going to take... So you take a pure five. Uh, I assume you're using your special blessing card. Yeah. So you get to build it for free. And... Uh, now, uh, which dice did you use? A five. So it has to be that one. Yeah. 
You immediately gain three points for building Whoop. that one. Uh, I'm orange. Uh, okay. And then you can rotate it and put it wherever you want to. So I guess I was going to give that one a go. Put it there. Right. So let's go through this. You gain points for buildings in the same row and column. The one. Whoop. You gain points for matching edges, which would be two, but because you're in the corner, it's four. Right? Now, what type of light is the raw action in? It's in the, the bright the daylight, light. Daylight. And is the tile a daylight tile? It is. So you get the bonus that's printed on it, which is it increases the value by one for each matching side. So that's another two points. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> okay? There you go. And Good then... Bit. Everything shuffles to the right, which it doesn't because you took it from there. But if you took it from there, everything would slide down, and then we get a new one. Okay. And there you go. So building pillars seems quite good. That, well, if you can get that <laughs> combo correct, then that, that was pretty good. So let me just double check that. Building a... Uh, that was the RAR action, wasn't it? Yeah, so score one point per building, regardless of ownership, in the same row and column. So even if that was my building you would have still got a point. Right, okay, I think we did that right. Oh, David's here. Hi, David. No, I think, I think we're good. I, I did a full teach without referring to the rule book. I don't think I made a mistake. Right. I enjoyed that. Four turns. We rotate. Okay? But we don't do the next bit of the rotation. We interrupt this rotation to do the mart phase. And then we'll come back to the rotation um, when we're finished. Okay. So, mart phase. Determine the balance of your scales. Uh, I'm plus five. I, I'm, I'm zero. You're plus five. Okay. Use faith to modify any imbalance. You must. You, you don't have to use your faith, but if you don't use it, it's gone. Oh, I may so as well you, then. You may as well use it. Yeah, so there you go. You're plus four. Lose victory points if you were down here, which were not. Determine the new player order. I'm closest to the middle, so that goes there, that goes there. Uh... If it was tied, it would be this. You would have broken ties because of that. Then, is the obelisk wheel pointing at a scoring marker? It is not. Where is it pointing to? Oh, it is. Um, well, no, it's not pointing to the next scoring tile, which is that. Yeah, one. that's the last scoring tile. I guess. We then put these dice back in the bag. Uh, we return all destiny cards. So let's uh, let's have the destiny cards in in the middle again. Where's the other two destiny cards? There they are. Okay. And we choose new ones in turn order. So I'm going to choose... Uh, I do like the gold. I'm going I'm to take the one that gives me a gold again. Right, you get to choose a destiny card. Remind me what determines which cards you can take under this phase. The position of your happiness marker. So right now you can only take cards in the tan section. How did you get so much happiness? I put I did a six. Uh, from okay, here. okay. Yeah, which which got me up from zero to six. And that's why I got uh, some resources. I gave them all some special juju. Um. Yeah, I guess I will go up the happiness track again. I quite like that as a to four. way to go. Those destiny cards can disappear for now again. Right, so two in here. Another three and a five. I'll put them where they should go. And two dice in here. Oh, we haven't um, sorted and, out and the now, position. And now we do the positioning, okay. yeah. So, so that's still forbidden. That's still pure. That's fine. That's, that's that. forbidden. That's that. That's tainted. Uh, Grey, white becomes forbidden. Brown goes in the middle. That's good. These are all in the middle now. We all good? Um, yeah, I've only done this section, but I think that's good. Yep. Right. So that's it. We're in a quarter of the way through the game. Okay. Round five. I'm going first. Let's just remind myself of... Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, now... Sort of had half a plan. 
So my happiness is now in the red section. So I can now take from here. But I kind of want to get up there. But I also kind of want that. I also need to look for other opportunities. Like if I want to build a pillar this turn, there's only one dice there. And then it, it's gone. But I Oh, what? here's the thing. When does that? That's scoring. scoring. It's not yet. Yep, scoring. Okay, good. So I could totally build that. So good. Why did I build that building there? <laughs> what a nonsense place to build a building. You maybe wanted the resources uh, from that row or I, whatever. I, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh gosh. Right. I have a plan. The plan is I am going to choose this. And it is a tainted die, so it goes here. I'm going to do the Osiris action. Build a building, lose a happiness. Uh, and it's a two, which means I'm placing a building in the two row. So I get the gold. And I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it... Do I compete with you? Oh. No, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put that papyrus generation up to six, and I'm going to add papyrus. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with something completely different in this game. Oh. <clears throat> if I were to remove this for the resources... You would get four granite. But would it still trigger... No. Okay. No. It's only when you do the god action. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the pillars get points for the number of buildings rather than buildings getting points for being near pillars. In the scoring phase, the pillars will get points for the buildings. The buildings will score one point each anyway, but that pillar is going to get you one point in the scoring phase. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, so I feel like I want some more resources. I guess I've still mm. got some gold, which could be uh, used as a wild card. Gold can be um, anything. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, I'm going to want some more bread, I think, at some point. To... You'll need bread for the scoring. Well, you'll need one bread for the scoring. Um, but that's still a way away. That allow that increases. There's an area control, mm -hmm. and so um, currently I'm winning that one. I'm winning that one. Nobody's in this one, and you're winning this one. And they're three points um, for each column. I should have gone there. I definitely should have gone there. Um. Hmm. It's, uh, not so, it's not so much too, too many choices as I'm actually... Which ones? Well, no, I mean, I'm not quite sure which one is the... You know, I feel like I've kind of completed the plan that I had almost. Yeah, and we've done so, the short-term plan. Um, well, while you're thinking, David's in the chat. David, is there anything you can share about the upcoming expansion for this game that may not be known about? Mm -mm -mm. Why would you do that? So the only thing I need to build how um buildings in here is is happiness. happiness. Yeah. So um um and in terms of upkeep of bread, when we do were to get storing, is it okay to use gold? Yes. Uh, there. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, I think I'm going to build a house. So it's a, a building. Uh, do that one. Yep. So your granite and limestone production goes up by one, and you gain one limestone, and okay. your happiness goes down by one. Thank you. 
Okay, my turn. I'm going to take this five here. So it is a pure dice. It goes in there. I spend two papyrus. I move my happiness to ten. And I don't get any scribes. You get either a limestone or a granite. Limestone is for pillars. Granite is for gods. Uh, granite is for statues. Uh, statues. Yeah, and uh, sometimes foundations. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, a seventh god action. Well, there, are, there already is a seventh god action. Anubis is a seventh god. You mean an eighth god? <laughs> Um, you go. Yeah, so it is. I feel like I want to take a pure action. Um, don't think. How many limestone do you need to build a pillar? Uh, for that one, four. For that one, four, and for that one, three. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's, it says on the foundation. Um. If you if you can't store all of the resources, does the leftover it go there? It goes in tainted. Goes in tainted. Even if you're taking a pure, yes. Um, dice. Okay. Wow. There's not much action on the pure front, really, is there? Um, nope. Uh, so, if I would, if I. <laughs> Hmm. If I take a dice to Don't so, get your scribe. Yeah. If you need it. That's true. I mean, it feels like almost a little bit of a waste, but then again, you know, I'm not necessarily using them, so um so if I were to take one of these two dice, yep. uh, it would just increase my happiness by one. Is that right? It would cost you two papyrus, and it would increase your happiness by one. And uh, you get two scribes because you used a one. Okay. So I've been I've been using high dice and boosting my happiness, but I've not been getting any scribes. So there's a nice balance here. These dice are not not bad. They're just different. Yeah, a little bit low on the papyrus front there, but mm -hmm. it would at least get me... Um, Got a gold? Yeah, and if I do it, it will get me some other resources. Mm -hmm. um, so I might use a scribe to boost a die, um, probably, well, the papyrus die, I guess. Um, by one or two. Oh, right, by one yeah. or two. Um, so put it up to a three. I'll put it up to a three then. Yeah. Um, so then, so the I guess I goes, have, Where's oh, but because there. you're using a three, you get a scribe back. Yeah. All right. Okay, but I can't use it immediately. You spend your two papyrus. So I have to be a gold and a papyrus yeah, to gain three happiness. Yeah. That was a. That was a pure pure dice. Okay, so that works out okay. Okay. And I can take a. Um, and then because it's a two-player game your own statue counts. If it was a three or four player game, you don't count your own statues. Oh, right. Only in a two player game. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've had two turns each. Where's the arrow? There's the arrow. We we'll rotate around. Two dice in each shadow area. That's good. I would have, I could have lost track of the number of turns there. Is there? I guess it's the number of it's dice. It's when you've got two dice each, and when you've got four, it's a marked phase. Yeah. Okay. Right. So let's reorganise things. So okay. Those forbidden. Those become pure. Uh, those are tainted. That's forbidden. That's forbidden. Oh, no more of that. Uh, we're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think we so. are. We are good. Uh, so it's my turn. Right, what am I doing now? I wanted to get my happiness up to the green area so that I can take the green cards. 
So now that I've done that, surely I want to do this action. Because <laughs> that's what it's all about. Um, but how many of these cards do I want to take? OMG, that's really good. Okay, I, I think I might just be happy with one. Yeah, I'm just going to take this pure brown two here. That allows me to take one card for any one section. My happiness marker is in the green zone, so I can take from anywhere up to here. So I'm going to take this decree. There we go. Replaced by a new decree, which is five points at the end of the game per statue built for the people. Doesn't matter who's built it. Every statue built by the people at the end of the game, five points. Right, okay. I have two decrees. Nice. Um, oh, yeah, that's a thing. Um. Oh, it does matter who built it. Okay, it says here, five points per statue built for the people. Okay. Can't do so that. Let one. me just read in the back of the rule book D19. Ah, so the wording in the book is per statue you have built for the people. So if you're going to do a reprint, I would I would <laughs> add the word you to the card. I might write it on myself. Thank you, David, for the clarification. Uh, has that decree that I took got a different symbol to the one that I already had? Yes, it does. Uh, I will. I will show them to the camera. It's not going to focus, is it? Man, is it just that? In one? fact, I don't have I any show papyrus. You here. I'll, sh I'll show you. They, they are my two decrees. So the symbols are different. It's a, it's all a bit snookered, I think. You can always produce resources, if in doubt. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, well, um... Uh, I guess I could produce quite a lot of... Granite? Granite, couldn't I? If I went, did could, go down you, that you road... Could take four granite? I'm just trying to remember what happens with which. Um, there is not a great deal of bread circulating, though. There's there's one bread available if you want it down there. Yeah. And there's not really much else in the way of ways to get bread. Do any of those cards get you bread? So, uh, limestone. No, no. Papyrus. Ah, yeah. But I can't get, you can't can't get, get that one. one. Yeah. It's when producing resources, you gain four bread. Um, I also don't have papyrus, so that sucks. Um, yeah, David's saying good players tend to produce resources no more than twice during the game. I, I was thinking the same thing. You've got 16 turns in the game. Every turn you spend re producing resources. Mm. But then again, last game I played, I went down a, a, a statue route. And the best way of getting granite was producing resources. So I think I produced resources three times in the game, but it was always to produce four granite, and then I'd build statues with it. But I think it depends what you're doing. I'll give you a clue. I'm going to be producing resources on my next turn. Yeah. Because I'd be crazy if I didn't. You've got quite a lot of papyrus storage. I have papyrus production of six. Production. Yeah. If I were... So limestone or granite's probably my best production choice. Um, Depending if you want to build statues or... Um, or pillars. So, um, 
which is this sector? That's actually the statue building. So David has also confirmed in the chat something I said earlier on. I said earlier on you might want to leave some parts of the game and just not bother with them. Mm. David said if you do all six actions roughly equally, you won't. We won't win. Okay. So if you do a bit of everything, it it won't work. I mean, you can see that from the triangular number sequence on the statues. If you're going to do statues, you want to do statues. I think. Because everything multiplies in terms of points. Like you don't want to be second in all of the rows here. <laughs> you know, you don't want to put buildings here and be second in every row because then you're not you're not scoring anything from it. Okay, I think I'm going to produce some limestone. Mm -hmm. Um, the only one I can produce is this one. Yeah. So that goes into there. Uh, so you produce five. I can keep four. You keep four of it, and one of them goes there. Okay. And on my action, I will take this. I will produce six papyrus, which I can keep. But then I'm going to play this card. When producing resources, take the action twice. So I actually produce 12 papyrus. There you go. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, wow. 11, 12. That's a good one. That should do. The game does come with fives, but in a two-player game, I figured we'd have enough ones, and it looks more impressive. So, yeah, 12 papyrus. There we go. Um, it's your turn. And then it's another marked phase, and then we're high, and then it's scoring. Wow! Well, that snuck up on me. Yeah, <laughs> I'd forgotten about that. Never mind. Never mind. Right. I was just being greedy and grabbing twelve papyrus. And you can work out now. I have no faith tokens. So my balance is minus one. So I'll, I'll put that there now so that you know where mine is going to be. Okay, well, I'm going to... Pure one. Do the um, building of yeah. the... So you get one point immediately, because that's what's there. Yeah. It costs you... Three limestone. Three limestone. Um, Did you get your point? No, I haven't moved it. One point now, and then rotate it however you want and put it wherever you want. So, I get... Do I get what happened? You will get one point if you put it in a column or row where there is a building of any player. Mm. And then you will get points for matching sides. Is there any significance for these, you know, if I... Oh, and you'll get... Whatever space it's on, whatever space you cover over is what you will get. If you put it in the middle, you'll get a gold. But you won't get any points for it because there's nothing. But if I were to go there, say. You'll get one point. Yeah. And one bread. Um, and then there's points on the scoring as well for having the. You'll get another point in the scoring because of, of this. But uh, you're not getting any points for matching sides. Um, if that's something that you were yeah about. well the thing being that I want some bread I don't don't want to lose the three points and for for having right. the buildings out so that's partly why I'm making that decision okay I so mean, you could go for the there's two bread there oh yeah you weren't bothered about the points for that and you'd get a point because of my building here okay thank you for the advice okay. I will do that but anyway I've just moved that up Actually, I was... So you're on 20, you got one point for that. Yeah. And you get one point for putting it in that column. Okay. So you're on 22. And I, now I get two bread. And you get the two bread. The tile has no bonus on it. And you've not got any matching sides. So. Yeah. So shuffle down and we get a new one. My balance is... Plus loads, the six is on the wrong side. Is it? Uh-oh... Okay, well, I, I, I believe the chat. 
My bad. Okay, so I'm at plus 11. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of people okay, saying the thank same you. thing. Thank you. I missed that. Eric's saying that as well. I missed that. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I'm minus loads, which is probably what, what, worse. How many? Uh, let's see. It's got plus four. Have you got any faith? Uh, no faith. Oh, before we do that, we rotate. Yeah. So we rotate. Then we skip out of the rotation phase to do the mark phase. So you're minus eight. Now, hold oh. on. I got minus eight plus minus four, so minus, minus four. Minus nine. Minus nine. Minus, minus five nine then. Plus, so you're on minus five. Do you lose a point? Okay. Okay, but then you're closest to zero than I am. I don't know what happens when you go off the score, <laughs> actually. <laughs> That's not, that, I didn't see that in the rule book. Um, right, what else happens in the mark phase? We've done that. New player order has been determined. Are we pointing at a scoring? Yes, yes, we are. So we have our first. So we interrupt the mark phase to go to the scoring phase. I get six points. You get six points. This is this bit's easy. Okay. Right, so if right. we can add six points onto both of us. Six. Six. Right. The temple. Each building and statue is a point. So we get one point each. Each pillar scores one point for each building and statue belonging to the same player in the same row and column. So that ah. pillar doesn't get you any points, yeah. but that pillar gets you one point. Okay. Statues. You've built one statue, you get one point. Okay. I've built no statues, nil point. My happiness marker has reached a triangle, so I get three points. Uh, one of my Markers is at the top row. I get two points. Two points. Yeah. Buildings. Neither of us have built enough buildings to unlock the points. I now have to pay two bread. I have one bread and one gold. You have to pay two bread. Mm, got it. And you have two bread. Okay. We leave the scoring phase. We remove that marker. We go back to the mart phase. We clear the scales. There you go. So how's it looking after the first scoring? Uh, so I'm on it's looking all right. 30, you're on 22. Yeah. Uh, destiny cards. Destiny cards go back in the middle, but now you choose first because you are the new first player. <laughs> which one do you want? I'm going to have the same again. I'm going to go up on a happiness. Okay, in which case I'll have the gold again. <laughs> yeah, actually, that might have been a better call. Well, whatever. Um... No, I'm happy with it. Okay. So you gain a happiness. I gain a I'm gold. happy with happiness. Uh, those will go back. And then we go back into the rotation phase. So, two in here. Two in here. And then we rejiggle things. So uh -huh. that's not changed. That's fine. That's not changed. That goes to the middle, that goes to the middle. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's still dark, isn't it? That was dark, is still dark. Hopefully, it should free up things. What about this? Uh, Done. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's light. Bread. F f oh, yeah. And, they're, and they're, they're, they're dark dice. Bread so. is forbidden. Right. Okay. So. We're halfway through. So um, that, that's eight, eight times I'm done. I'm first you now. You are now the first player some for the second half fluke. of the game. What am I going to do with all this papyrus, eh? Um, <laughs> Take millions of cards. Well, at least for the, is the plan. third quarter, isn't it? We get. Do we not change change order again at the mark? No, I'm, I'm just saying my plan. Oh yeah. But I think for the rest of the game is to spend the papyrus on just. Keep it's cards. quite a good plan. I don't um, know. We'll see if it works. Um, no, I was just saying about you said that I'm going to be the first player for the second half of the game. I oh, thought sorry. there was another. You're right for yeah. the third quarter of the game, and then yeah, if I mess my thing up again, you will be the first player for the last quarter of the game. <laughs> okay, right. What was I thinking? Uh, well, there's a bit more options in the way of um, things we can do now. Um, 
I've still got my scribe from the start. I've not used it at all. Let's just check my scoring cards again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what happens if uh, one of these rows is tied? It's whoever's highest. Oh. So if I went there, I would have got the points from that column instead of Oh. Me. Oh. Okay, I'm going to go... Uh, Tainted three. In there. I'm going to build... So your bread production goes up by one, your papyrus production goes up by one, and you gain a bread. Oh, I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with that at all. So I'll take the... <laughs> two and go there. La -da -da. Bread goes up by one, and get a bread. Well, that was a bit of... Quick and easy tip for tat, wasn't it? Oh, hold on, but we've both got to... Oh, we both have to lose our happiness, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, good then. Um, So if you're building in a row... Did we pay the bread for the buildings? We did. Yeah, we, we paid the bread for the buildings. I paid one bread and one gold. Shoved it down somebody's throat and said, eat this. That's a while back now, though, isn't yeah. it? Um, if, we were, if I were to build in this row... A pillar. Uh, a, a, building. a building. Yeah, you'd get three points because there's a pillar. And then you'd get one bread, one papyrus and one faith. Yeah, not, not because there's a pillar, because there's one of your pillars. Um, okay, can I do that with... That's the... Uh, You're oh, sorry, building, yeah. Um, so a any of these dice would enable me to do that? Yeah, the value on the dice is how much population you gain. With any dice, you can build on any location. So there's a there's motivation to taking a high value mm -hmm. one. Um, I guess I just have to try and get some pure dice. Well, actually, there aren't that many pure dice knocking around, are there? No. Um, so I might just take that one. Uh, so I get to go up three on. Well, so I'm going to build a building for two. Over here. Yeah. Um, so that was a die of value three. Yeah. So your population goes up three. Yeah. So you have just entered the blue zone. Mm -hmm. So we populate this. And I get a papyrus, a bread, and a faith. Is that right? You get a papyrus, a bread, and a faith. Yes. And then I get three points as well. Three points because there's one of your pillars in that column. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Cool. Uh, right. So. We need some happiness, but I can't do the happiness because there's no dice here and I, I don't have two scribes. If I had two scribes, I could do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this six from here. I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I am going to spend one papyrus to cycle out all of the cards in the green zone. The green zone is going. Now, I don't quite know, because I've never done it before, where those cards go. So I'm just going to read to make sure we get it right. I'm also going to sneeze. <laughs> there we go. Right. Thankfully, I've got a mute button at the ready. Um, yeah, Thoth. 
Before selecting cards, you may pay one Papyrus to discard all of the cards and immediately refill them. Just discard. So to the discard pile. To the discard pile. Right. Is it good? Is it good? All right. Two technologies. And a blessing. Right. Now I can do this again for other sections now if I wanted to. So if, if I really didn't like these four cards, I can't cycle these four cards again right now. But I could decide, okay, I don't want that section. I'll cycle this section away. But I'm not going to. I'm going to take three. So I'm going to spend three Papyrus to take three cards from this section. It's going to be another decree. Uh, and it's going to be... Oh, uh, okay. Neither of these are any good. But because I chose a six, I have to do this one. Yeah, no, this, this this is no good. This doesn't fit with my plan at all. But I'll just take them. So I've got I've got two technology cards that I might never use. Okay, we refill, and that is my go done. And that is rotation time. Oh, so rotate. Get some more dice. So, two for there, two for there. Well, so, what's happening now? All of a sudden, these become pure. That's pure. That's tainted. Uh, that's tainted. That's tainted. And over here, those become forbidden. And that becomes pure. Yeah. There we go. We're done. Russ is here. Hi, Russ. Thank you for joining in. What's going yes, on this here? This is the fifth stream that I've done today for Tikanu. So that, once you build it, if you build it when Ra is in daylight, because it's got a white background, Ah. Uh, yeah, then yeah. you would basically perform this action with a value one. You'd take a card. It's basically, okay. it's, it's take a card is what it is. Ah, yes, of course, the daylight. Yeah. You can, remember, you can still do it. That's just an extra added bonus if you build it in the daylight. Mm, 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 mm. So we're about to start round 11 of 16. I think two people who've played this game a lot, who know what they're doing, could knock it out in an hour. <laughs> Maybe hour and a quarter. Uh, okay, I can do that. That would probably work. Um. But then, yeah, I could probably do that. Um. That would be all right. I mean. Thinking about building some pillars and getting some bonuses as a result, mm -hmm. but or at least one pillar. Uh, yeah, the technology cards I've taken are all about building pillars, and I decided early on I'm not going to bother with building pillars, <laughs> but I might um, have to now. I guess, yeah, I'm looking quite likely to end up quite tainted again, but I might just have to live with that. Um, Wondering what else there is. Um, so that's the that's that one. Okay. Yeah, Nidalers have gone really big into statues. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So, um, so you get three points just for taking a tile from that space. Okay. You spend two limestone and a granite. Uh, where was the five? The five was five was tainted. Yeah. 
And I'm going to go here. Okay. Um, am I? Yeah, I'm going to go there. Okay. So you get one point because there's a building in that column. You get one point because of a matching green side. And then one point because of another matching green side. And then you get the bonus on the space that you placed it. Which on. was a bread. Which was a bread. Okay. All right. Yep, 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 done. Uh, we get a new tile here. Okay. So I won't be building a pillar this, this turn then, because there's, there's no dice there. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this four. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> You're gonna wait be... a minute. I'm, I'm going down the dark side here. You are really going down oh, the dark side. Oh, that's terrible. I could just build a statue. To be honest, I could just build a statue. I'm on, I'm on minus five at the moment. I could be. I much think worse. I need to build a statue. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this because it's pure. Oh. Yeah, well, it's going there. It's the obvious shout. Uh, my statue costs me four granite. I only have two, but I do have some gold. So two granite, two gold, and I'm going to build this statue. And I'm going to build it here. So suddenly, I now win both of these columns. Oh, you get. Yeah. And then, because you're right up the top, is, do I have any recourse there? or? Yeah. I have one in this column. Right. If you put another one in this column, you have two in that column. Okay, and then it's the, top, the highest place is the tie highest break. Place, highest place is the tie break, yeah. But that counts as one in both. So how did? Oh, you built the statue from there over there. Uh, yeah. Whenever you build a statue, it can either be a god or for the people. And I decided to build it for the people. Um, yeah. Okay. And he matched two sides. He did. Yes. And we gave him points for... We got the. Okay, gave him a point for both matching sides. I think we did, yeah. Yeah. I think playing this four player, that would be a lot busier. Yeah. Yeah, there'd be a lot more interaction going on up there in a four player game. Brendan's here. Hi, Brendan. Oh, very good, Russ. He hopes I've been tycooning it easy. How people come up with these puns, I don't know. Uh, what have we got here? Perform an Anubis action. Right, the Anubis action is basically take any die from anywhere and do anything with it. <laughs> so if you play that card when you're taking a die, you can take it from anywhere, including a Forbidden Zone, and do anything with it. What am I allowed to take if I were to... Limestone or granite. Okay. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, given that I'm... Mm. But that's only... Is that only if I'm doing the god action? Or is yeah. it... Uh... Yeah. Taking resources doesn't trigger the statues. Uh... Uh, which side of the scales would a forbidden die go on? So if you use Anubis to take a die, it actually goes down here. So it doesn't go on either scales, either set of the scales. And if, if I were to take this for the bread, it still goes on my scales. Is that right? Yes. Um, yeah, you'd get two bread. And this is the this is the mm -hmm. mart. This is the pure side. This yeah, is we're about that is your last dice before the balancing. But not the scoring. Not the scoring. Ah, so that makes a that makes a difference. I don't have to worry about having bread just no, yet. Not yet. But I do want something. You can tell when the net scoring is. It's there. 
So I think that's right. Because we're about to rotate and have a mart. Yeah. Then we'll rotate. Then we'll rotate again. Yeah. That's that's the scoring. Okay. Well, I'm kind of tempted. To, well, I can't build any pillars just yet. No. The pillar. You know, we're going to be fighting each other for pillar building priority. Um. Yeah, because there's only going to be two dice in there for the rest of the game, unless you get a second scribe. Um, you get a second scribe, you can then do the Anubis action. Okay, in which case I might take this to do... Um, the god action? Yeah. So you spend two papyrus. Ah, I don't have the papyrus. Um, so that knackers it. It'd be awesome if you did, because you, <laughs> you'd get two scribes from it. Yeah. Um... I've only got one papyrus. Uh, thank you, Joel, for the reminder. If you are watching this video live, or even if you're watching this afterwards, please uh, click the like button. And uh, you can't leave a comment on the video while it's live, but if you are watching this afterwards, please leave me a comment in the video. It really helps the algorithms and let me know you watched it. And let me know what you think of the game. It's tough. It's really tough. Mm. I'm going to have to, I think, um, take a pure three and build. Yep. So I'm going to give up two bread. Um, there is a two space available, isn't there? There is one two space available. Yep, there's one here as well. Oh, there are two two spaces available. Yeah. They're basically the same. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. So you get a faith, a granite, and a limestone. But no points. Because there's no pillars. Yeah. Um, what yeah. was it? It was a three. So yeah. A three population. Okay. What does that give me? A gold? Nothing. That's only if you're happy. Oh, there. damn it. Yeah. All population does is unlock these cards for everybody and act as a limit to your happiness. So I've got faith. I've got. So your faith is going to balance you out completely. Yeah. Which means, and you'll win the tie break, so you'll be going first. There's nothing I can do about that. So. So, what do I do instead? Do I really go down the dark side? Ah. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I could have done that if that was there. Oh, it's rubbish. That's rubbish, that's rubbish, that's rubbish, and that's rubbish as well. Oh, it's all rubbish. Um, want to boost the happiness up? Uh, I'm not sure why. Does get me a few extra points at the end of the game. Allows me to take from blue. Is blue any good? Not really. Could just take cards down here. Who's going to be going first next round? You're going to be going first next round. But there'll be two dice there. You can't use both of them. But, oh, and neither of them will be blocked. Neither of them will be forbidden. Because that will be in the shadows. So both of us can build a pillar next turn. So, with that in mind, what am I at the moment? I'm a net minus three. I don't know. I, I really don't know. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it's not just me. Um... There's so much going on. So... And how is my population only there? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, why did you build that that way around? I might just ignore these technologies. What I don't want to do at this stage is drift off, drift off target. And I think that might be where I'm going. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this and put it there. 
I'm not going to cycle any cards, but I'm going to spend two Papyrus to take two cards from either the tan, the red, or the green section. I'm going to take it from the green section. And I'm going to take that one. And that one. Mm. What's that when you receive a Horus bonus from a statue? I mean, I don't have any statues, so. Um... Yeah, that'll do. I got those two. Those get replenished. And. Right. Three quarters of the way through the game. So we rotate, then we interrupt the rotation to do the Mart thing. So I think I'm at minus six. So minus two. So minus two points. You're on zero. zero. So you go first. Uh, dice go back in. Scales clear. Uh, any faith that's left over disappears. I suspect, Paul, you have forgotten to move your population when you built, unless you got a free building from a card as your building dice add up to at least 14. Um, oh, it might be me. Which one? Where do you get the population? You only get population if you build a building here. So, so I, I, it, might be, it might be once. me. It might be me. Well, no, because you've no, gained, I'm up. You've yeah. gained 11. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, so yeah, I'm not quite sure what Paul's referring to. Paul's saying my building dice add up to 14, but I'm not sure what you mean by building dice. You only get population when you build a building here, and I have only built one of them. So that's why I went from 5 to 10. So. Yeah, I think it sounds like we've done it right. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is. Yeah. Buildings here do not increase your population. If they do, I've been playing it wrong all day. <laughs> but according to the iconography, buildings there increase your population. Right, so what have we got? They're all tainted. Uh, that's tainted. That's forbidden. That's, that's oh, yeah, tainted, that doesn't change at all. Forbidden. Is it, uh, I think it might be this, is this one changed? This one changes, they become tainted and that one becomes pure because it's gone dark. Yeah. Okay. Paul misunderstood. No problem. And it's me yeah, first. Mr. Kelly is right 99% of the time, so whenever he posts anything... <laughs> pay attention. I, I pay attention. Right, we are in the last quarter of the game. Um, oh, I'll tell you what we didn't do. We didn't do this. You get first choice. Oh, I'm going to take the gold this time. Okay. In which case, I will take the... I'm going to take the one with the scribe. Because that gives me two scribes. Which means I can do the Anubis action. Which is ultimate flexibility. Right. Off we go then. Four turns left. The two white dice should be pure. Oh yes, they should. Thank you. My bad. D17, I guess, is also only yours. Yeah. That's no good for me at all. For you, that's eight points. I mean, you're still quite ahead on points. I don't... I mean, I've stolen this, but that's only 12 points. That doesn't even catch me up to where you are. But I've got some end game scoring cards that I've been collecting. Yeah. That's the only thing that's going to help me, I think. Well, this is in the shade, so none of... Okay, that's interesting. You're not going to get any of the bonuses printed on the tile itself. Hmm.
Which one's Thoth? Thoth is this one. Okay. It's the it's the taking cards from the market. Is Thoth. And I can take from the green or the red. Uh, only the re- uh, the tan or the red. The tan or the red, yeah. rather. Yeah. yeah. Okay. When producing resources, perform an Anubis action. Got a gold. You do? It can be anything. It can be anything. Okay, going to spend a gold and a papyrus to take this one. So you're doing the th- tainted three, and you're going to take two cards yep. from either this section or this section. Yeah, so I'm going to do. Can't mix. Take the two blessings. That actually what I want. I was trying to remember why I wanted the papyrus now. Uh, not sure if actually. During each mark. Oh, well, that's not any much use to me at this stage. Um, actually, I might take that one instead. Can't take from two different sections. Oh, you can't? No. Got to be from one section or segment, as it calls it in the rulebook. Fine. Okay, two new blessings. Right. Me. What am I going to do? Am I going to build a pillar? I think I am. Question is, which pillar am I going to build? So I think I'm going to build a pillar with the three. So that goes on there because it's tainted. I'm going to build this pillar mm-hmm. uh, for free. Oh. No. No, not for free. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. I've just looked at this card. Yeah, no, we're doing it. Uh, So I pay two... Two limestone and two gold to build that one. So I get two points immediately. You could put me on uh, sorry. two, please. Yeah. Now then, <clears throat> where is this going to go? I mean, it's not ideal because where that's gone. But... I think, because I'm scrabbling for points, I think it's going to go up there. So I get four for putting it in the corner. So I get four points for putting it in the corner, plus an extra one because there's a building there. So I'll have five points for that, please. Okay. And because of my technology, I get the bonus on it, even if the, the amount of light is not right. Which is three population. There you go. Yeah, I've used my technology. <laughs> Done. I think that's right. I paid the four limestone. I put it on. I got loads of points. Yeah, we're good. All right, here we go. Three turns left. Uh, we need a new. Oh, slides down. We need a new one. And it's a shady one. Is it a shady one or no, is it a, black, a dark one? It's quite hard to tell apart. It's I think, dark. I it's think dark. It's a dark one. It is dark. I take it back. Right. So. Is it? Have we got any dark ones in the game? Just have a look through the stack. It's a dark one. Yeah, they're, they're all dark. It is a bit hard to tell. It'd be nice if they put an icon on. Okay. Board then players here, you still made it. Yes. Thank you for joining in. So 
I can use a scribe if I'm going to produce resources. Alter the dice by plus or minus one or two. So if I take that to four. That's four bread. Take Oh, but I can only store three. Yeah, so just use the scribe to give it a plus one. Um, I might. It doesn't matter because it makes it a three. That doesn't quite do what I had intended, but it's not terrible. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll do this one. Yep. So that'll be three. That's a three tainted die. That use the scribe, gets you three bread. Um, and I can use this blessing to get four papyrus. At the Whenever same. you generate resources. Which is what I've just is done. What you've just done. So you get four papyrus. Nice. Okay, so I need to build a building. That's going to get me points. But. Oh. Now, I'm going to take this. So it's a pure die, value four. I spend two papyrus to gain four happiness, and you get, because of your statue, a limestone or a granite. Huh. And because I used a four, I get a scribe. Now I've suddenly got all the scribes. And then we rotate, and we take the dice out of the bag for the last time in the game. It's quite... I mean, I'm not really sure what I'm doing exactly, what my like, end game strategy it's is. Great. But it's <laughs> it's quite ex exhilarating. It is. Uh, right, where is all this going then? So let's see, see if we can get this right. Oh, hold on, yeah. Let's get this wrong. Uh, they're uh, they're that fine. Goes there. That goes there. They're fine. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. Yep, we're good. Right, last two turns of the game. Two turns, is that all? I want eight. <laughs> what am I going to do in two turns? I think I know what I'm going to do. Oh, there's a there's another pillar that could be built, not by me. <laughs> I got one gold. That's not going to build a pillar. Yeah. So if I perform an Anubis action... Yeah. Take any die, for, any die, even a forbidden one, and do anything with it, but the dice goes there. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, so I don't necessarily need to do that right now. Um, we've only got two turns. You've got this turn, and then one more. So I've got the... I can use an Anubis action. It would allow me to do that. Um, what have I got here? I've got a bunch of papyrus. I mean, like... I thought I needed it. I don't think I really need it. Um, yeah, you've not managed to get your happiness marker into the green, so you can't take any decree cards. Uh, yeah. I definitely want to build a pillar. Okay. So that's one of my two, going to be one of my two turns. If you don't do it now, you might. Well, I could do it with you know I can't. And I also could do it with an Anubis action, but yeah, I do know, well, you've now yeah, just told me true. that you, you can't, and you have told me before, even yeah. if I might have slipped my mind. So the question is more, well, I, I guess if you can't do that, 
I guess I'm kind of thinking what else I can really do for points. I suppose I could try and build something that would reduce my happiness a little bit. Um, I could get myself back into one of those rows and that would actually allow me to get me a, one more resource for yeah so that's the thing to do probably um although yeah that's fine i'll do that um so action 15 is pure five so you're going to build on row five i'm going to build there okay um that. Yes. So your production of limestone goes up by two, and you immediately gain two limestone. And your happiness goes down by one. Okay. Sound hopefully didn't disappear. <laughs> Monica's accidentally pressed the mute button. I've done that before. Right. Uh, me. I'm I'm not sure now. I mean, I do. I'm, I've got a build. I've I've got a build here because I've got a card that gets me extra points. So I'd be crazy if I didn't. Um, and the dice increases my population, but then I can't really increase my happiness much beyond it. So I probably just want to take a two. Yeah, I'll take a pure two, put it on there, which is better than a tainted die for me, I think. I will spend t t a bread and a gold as two bread. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to lose 12 points for not being able to feed my people. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll just take bread as my last action. So that's going on there. I get three points because of one of my pillars, plus two. When you perform a Hathor God action, gain an additional two points per pillar. Oh, wait a minute. I'm performing the Bastet or Hathor action. I don't pay the cost. So I'm going to take that back. Do I still want to put it there? Because you can get a more expensive uh, one. No, that's better because of my pillar. Yeah. So it's actually free because of the blessing, but it's five points. And because of that. You get two points per pillar. Uh, and I also get a granite, a limestone, and a faith, which I'm not going to do anything with. But it's gold that I want. Yeah, I'm still going to, I'm still short to, to bread. Okay, I think I'm going to actually use the Anubis action okay. to um, just take, take any dime. Yeah, well, in fact, I may as well take a forbidden one. Okay. Um, so, and what action do you want to do? So that goes there, and you can do any action with it. You're going to do that one. Yep. Um, so it's three points. One, two, three, just for taking it. You've matched one side, and there's one building in the row. And you get the, the one bread. Yeah. And that's it. You're done. That is your game over. Oh, and I got to spend some... Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, what was two... two... It was two, white, two limestone and a granite. Two... Um, we Technically, we get another one. Look at all them pillars. It's another darky, dark night, whatever it is. Shaded. No, dark. Okay. Well, I can actually build that. And I do have two scribes, so I could do that, but my bread is four and I've only got two. I don't really want to take resources as my last action, but I can't think of anything really else to do. When I could put a building here and it would be a four. So I can't have it in the bread column. I could use a scribe to make it a five and put it there. And that would get me the two bread that I need. 
it would also get me to the top of there, which is two points. I think that might be the best move. That sounds like a pretty good move. So yeah, I'm going to take the pure four. No, yeah, with a scribe to make it a six. I then build a building here, which gets me two bread immediately. It puts my bread production up two, hits one and stops, and then I put another one up by one, doesn't matter what. Okay. And I'm, oh, my happiness goes down, which means I lose three points. Oh. <laughs> I could literally hear your happiness going down yeah. <laughs> in real life. That was just me role playing. Um, <laughs> no, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, it's too late. I'm going to do it. So I lose a happiness by doing that. That is it. So at the end of the 16th turn, we rotate. Bing. We now go into the mart phase. So I'm at plus nine. Uh, plus eight. How's your balance? Minus one. Uh, no faith? <laughs> None whatsoever. Okay. So neither of us loses any points. You become the new first player, which is going to get you three points at the end of the game. All oh, right. Uh, we now do the scoring. Okay. So, scoring. I get three points for that, three points for that, three points for that. So I get nine and you get three. I'll do your three. Okay. Next, temples. So every building and statue gets a point. So you get three, I get two. Yep, that's the buildings and statues done. Every pillar scores one point for every building and statue belonging to the same player. So this pillar gets you one, this pillar gets you two, this pillar gets you one, and that That's pillar gets four. you none. So it's four points. I have one pillar that gets me one point. Okay. Statues. You built one statue. I've built one statue. Happiness markers. I've reached there, which is three points. Two points for every production marker that's at the top. So I get four. And I get two. You get two. Uh, victory points shown on your building row. I've built to there. So, so if I... two points each, two points each. Bread. I need to spend one, two, three, four bread. I have three bread and a gold. I've got four bread. Just. Brett says, has he missed anything? <laughs> Final scoring. <laughs> right. <laughs> then we go back to the mark. We don't need to do anything else now. Let's do the points for end of game. Turn. One, two, three. And now we go to the decrees. You want to do yours first? Yeah. You have one decree, so you score it. One victory point per building, which is no longer on my board. So that's, what, six or seven? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, so seven points. Okay, right. So I have four decrees, but I can only score three of them. Okay. And they have to be different symbols. But the first one I'm going to score is the one that I started with, which is four points per unique decree symbol, including that one. I have okay. four different symbols. So even though I'm not scoring them, I think that counts. So that's 16. Boom. So one. That's up to 70. Yeah, that's at 70. So that's one card scored. That would only be four points, so I'm not going to score that one. This one is three points for each workshop. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 15. And then this one is points equal to half the total value of your pure dice. That's 12, so that's six. Uh -huh. There you go. And I think that's it. Some good decrees that there. Is the, yeah. Yeah, I was confident at the end because I knew one was going to be 16 points and another one was going to be 15 points. So I, I knew that I had a lot of points coming in at the end there. So there we go. We are two hours 20, but 45 minutes of that, I think, was the teach. Now, as I mentioned at the start, uh, a lot of the content that I create is funded through Patreon. So thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for helping fund the channel. If you do like the content that I create, Please check out the Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. 
But this video or the, the Takenu video today have been partly sponsored by Board and Dice. Therefore, I shouldn't really give you my opinion on the game. So, Andy, <laughs> on the spot, <laughs> you, you, on, you know, I'm, you know, I'll no, make, I, I, I'll, I really I'll enjoyed it. Tea, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. Um... First game. There's a, there's a lot going it's, it's on. A lot but, going. It's your first game. It's a but it, game. not too much in any way, shape, or form. And it all works together really well. And yeah, I guess I want to play again to like run it all together a bit better. So yeah. So be honest with me. 30 minutes into the teach, was you thinking, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this? No. Oh, I'm okay. Cause I, not I, at I, all. Because I probably would because I can't take more than 15 minutes of rules otherwise my I need to start doing stuff it probably helps I haven't been playing as many games recently as I have right. for so you're a while fresh. <laughs> yeah um, but where you felt at the start after the teach to where you feel at the end is like is so different yeah very much so very much so um, what would yeah. you have done different is there, is there anything that you can look back on and think oh I didn't do that as well as I could have done yeah, I think probably trying to get into the cards a bit more, possibly. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It hasn't worked quite in the way I would have thought. Okay. Um, you know, the resources aren't as important as I mean. It's. Uh, I mean, it's it's possible to get resources when you need them yeah. uh, without having to just take a dice for resources quite a lot. So. Um, Be interesting to look back and see how many times. We took resources. Yeah. I did it... I think I did it twice. Twice. I, I, well, I did it at least once when I did the double papyrus and got 12 papyrus. But I can't remember if I did it again. I was almost going to do it at the end. But then I thought, well, if I build here, that's two bread. That's all I need. And I knew from my decree that this was worth three points. Although I lost three points. So I probably would have been better just taking resources. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think people's first games of this. I my advice on playing playing a game like this for the first time is play it as quick as you can. Don't agonize over every decision because otherwise you will play it. You'll play a four or five hour game. Just play your first game, just do stuff, and then get to the end of it and go right. Now we've played it. Now we know what we're doing. Off we go. I thought that having the statue here. Well, actually, it worked out pretty well. Because I was doing this a lot. Yeah. Um, that was my plan. <laughs> and I think I think that's still, I, you know, I think I would do that again, but maybe try and get another one possibly or, I don't know, Yeah. think about where I want to have it a bit more. But it worked out pretty well. This so. is the kind of game where, I mean, I deliberately went for cards because in the solo game that I did this afternoon, I didn't touch the cards. So I decided I was going to get my papyrus generation up. I was going to generate lots of papyrus, papyrus, I was going to use that on these two actions because you need to move the happiness marker along to give you access to the green cards and I was going to try and get a whole bunch of degrees. That was my plan right from the start. The next game I play, I might say, I'm going to build all my statues. And literally from the start of the game, I'm just going to get as much granite as I can and I'm going to try and build all my statues. And then, do you build your statues on these spaces or do you build them around here? Because if you build them around here in a four-player game, you're going to be getting these bonuses all the time. It would be nice to play with more players as well, just to see what the dynamics are like there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some games don't work that well at two. I thought this worked at two, but this area over here, I don't think we saw the fullness of how that... Mm. All of that seemed to be a little bit of points here, a little bit of points there, rather than... Any big points? I don't know. It could have been just because it was a two-player game. It worked well when the um, the foundation was in the right phase. Yeah, yeah. Except my technology meant I could cheat with that. Paul is saying that the bread was worth six points, so it was definitely worth doing. Uh, oh, and I got yeah, an extra got an extra two. So because if I hadn't have taken the action, I would have just taken bread instead. But actually putting that there. It got me two points. So it was a net it was a net gain of two points, I think. Uh, Monkey Unit says he loved it, but his regular playgroup didn't. So uh, yeah, I would basically defriend them uh, and get, <laughs> get a new playgroup. Uh, James is saying combining a blessing with a resource action you can get uh, can get you a lot. Yeah. I mean that that's what I did. I got I got twelve papyrus. Uh, James yeah. has painted his um, this. 
I'll show you the picture in a minute. But yeah, painted this gold with a nice black wash. It looks really good. So I can be objective about the game and I can say that the production value is really good. The pieces are all really thick, chunky, even just the simple resources. Really, really nice thickness. Um, it plays quite well. I think, as I say, I think it's a complex game. I think it's a heavy game. But I think once you've played it a couple of times, I think, I think you'll be all right with it. Iconography, graphic design, really clear. I, I thought all of this, it's all, it's all there. So congratulations to the team on putting this together. Um, yeah, I think it's all really clear. The little scoring icons that remind you this is when this scores, just everything about it. And I can tell you that the rulebook's good as well. I learned how to play the game from the rule book this afternoon. And, yeah. and you weren't involved with it. I wasn't involved with it. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, so good rule book. Right, we are all done. Um, yeah. Thank you to everybody who's watched the streams today. This has been the fifth stream that I've done today for this game. Three of them were public. I did a, an unboxing video this morning. I did a solo playthrough this afternoon. I did a two player playthrough tonight. But earlier on today, I did two videos. Uh, which were behind the scenes videos for my patron supporters where I learned how to play the game on camera literally reading through the rule book. So that's the kind of behind the scenes footage that patron supporters get. Before I disappear, I will be back tomorrow. Keep an eye on my social media because I'm live streaming all weekend. Uh, I've got three more videos coming tomorrow, possibly four, uh, and then a couple of videos coming on Sunday. So yeah, that's what I'm doing this weekend. As I say, if you like the content that I create, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, check out the Patreon page, and that's everything. Thank you very much, Andy. We will see you next time. Take care, everyone. Good night. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.